Hello, how are you? We are rapidly approaching the midpoint of 2021, so lists are starting to come out of the best books of the year so far, and I've already made a video about one such list uh, that was published by BBC Culture. And here's another one. You know I can't resist a geeky book list, and I always find these really interesting and useful to look over in order to evaluate what books have come out this year that I really ought to get to. I mean, some of them I've not even heard heard of before, and some have been on my shelf and I've been meaning to get to them, and some of them I, I have read, and so I want to talk about my thoughts about those. Um, so I'm just going to go through this list of 15 books and uh, give short summaries of them and any thoughts about them. And this is a US list, so this was published by Vulture uh, that was created by Hilary Mantel. Um, no, no, not Hilary Mantel, um, Hilary, Hilary Kelly, that was the journalist that wrote this list. Wouldn't it be a thing if Hilary Mantel gave her her 15 best books of the year so far? I'd, I'd like to read that list as well. Um, but no, this was put out by Vulture. And so since I'm in the UK, um, the UK and US publications tend to be slightly different. I mean, there's a lot of crossover, but there are um, a couple of books on this list, which I don't think have been published in the, the UK yet. But another fun thing about this is that I'll be able to evaluate the differences between the UK and US covers, which which is always like fun to look at, or at least I find it fun to look at. So I'm gonna start talking through all of these books, um, starting off with a, a trilogy, um, which is sort of complicated to talk about. So it's um, the Copenhagen Trilogy by Tove Ditlevsen, a Danish author. And um, these came out quite a while ago in the UK, and they were published as three separate volumes. Um, so you can see them all here. Um, they all have these sort of pinkish covers. And, uh, and it's sort of interesting because there are different translators for the, the different books. So these are a series of memoirs which were first published in the 1960s, I believe. And Tove Ditlevsen uh, was quite a famous, fam famous? famous Danish author um, in, in her time and is sort of seen in the sort of the canon of Danish literature. But this is the first time she's been translated into English. And the translators for the first two volumes of the trilogy was Tina, oh, is it Tina, what is it? Tina Nunnally. Uh, so she translated uh, Childhood and Youth. And uh, but the third volume, Dependency, uh, was translated uh, by someone else, by Michael Michael Goldman. And uh, I actually went to the launch of when uh, these uh, books were first published um, a couple of years ago. I think it was yeah September in uh, twenty twenty nine here, and um, it was just in this small bookshop, and uh, and uh, so it was a really intimate conversation. And he talked about the translations of these books, and um, and I can't I remember at the time why he translated the third volume and not the first two volumes. I'm not, I can't remember why that, that happened. But anyway, yeah, different translators. And this is all about the author's life and development uh, growing up in a working class family and post World War II in Denmark and um, her aspirations to become a writer and how those weren't really being supported by her family or the community around her on um, those artistic aspirations of her. And and she describes this so beautifully, this, this process. And, uh, and I found it so moving, though I've still only read the first volume of, of the trilogy, Childhood. And I think that's partly because I was slightly worried and trepidatious about where this was going to go because um, y you know that even though she does become a successful writer, there are foreshadowings in this first volume about how things sort of go wrong for her. And she has, I think, s struggles with drug addiction and um, depression. And uh, and I, I was almost like too nervous about where this was going to go, even though I thought the writing was absolutely absolutely amazing and really beautiful. So um, in the US, this has been published all together in one volume as a trilogy. And uh, and this is what it, it looks like. But also at the beginning of this year, um, Penguin, um, who published it here, uh, brought it out as a single volume as well. Um, so so we have that now as well and can get it all in a, in a single book. And also um, Penguin just brought out at the beginning of this year uh, the first translation of a novel 
of hers called The Faces. Um, so I really want to get a copy of that and, and get to that because, yeah, I think her writing really is extraordinary. There's this wonderful passage in um, childhood where she's talking about how the state of childhood for people who don't feel comfortable in that, that feel like they've been sort of born in the wrong situation, it can feel like a narrow coffin that you're, you're trapped in. Your childhood can feel like this narrow coffin and that you're not able to get yourself out of it and the, the sort of panic of, of that. And yeah, and I really like felt that as, as like someone who was, didn't really feel comfortable in a childhood state. Like I, I just always wanted to be an adult. And I know everyone has that to a certain extent, but I think when you're born in a sort of circumstances which you don't feel like is your natural habitat or, or place that you, you belong in, that yeah, you struggle and want to, um, to, to be an adult already. And, and uh, yeah, and she describes that so beautifully and also her artistic aspirations. And yeah, so I, I highly recommend um, this trilogy, even though I haven't read the entire thing yet. Next is the much talked about, much anticipated, uh, much covered uh, novel, new novel by Kazuo Ishiguro, Clara and the Sun. And so you can see the US cover versus the UK cover. And I have to say, I think I prefer the, the UK cover, even though they're, they're quite similar in, in some ways, but um, but yeah, I think this is uh, much more beautiful in, in a lot of ways. So uh, so this is uh, narrated from the perspective of an artificial friend uh, named Clara, who uh, who in the beginning of the novel is sitting in a shop and waiting to be purchased. Um, so this is in an unspecified time in the future in the United States, and Clara is purchased by one family, but not for the reasons that she you would necessarily expect of just of a child having a doll and um, because it's all through her perspective we get this limited point of view of what's happening in the larger world what's happening in this family and also she has a slightly skewed perspective because she is a robot and uh, and has a different perspective on sort of like humanity and human relations and and how the world is just like physically ordered um, than we would have and that is so interesting because she her point of view is so sympathetic you get so drawn into her point of view and and really feel for her and grow to love her um, that you just think of her as a human but she's not a human she's a robot and so it's really interesting the way that Ishiguro explores that issue to do with um, yeah, what makes us human and what makes us not. And also Clara has this intense faith and belief in the sun um, because they're, um, she's partly like solar powered and, and some of the artificial friends are partly solar powered. So she has this almost like religious belief in the sun and its power. And how he explores that, that, um, that yeah, issue of like faith and religion and belief is, is so interesting as well. And the, the story of this is so tense, how it plays out, what's happening behind the scenes and how you gradually discover that is yeah, it's so incredibly done. And so this is a novel that's really stuck with me and I've continued to think about it and sort of mull over it. And the more I think about it, the, the more interesting and insightful I think it is. And so it is a novel I think I wanna go back to again and again and even though this is a no novelist of like such great acclaim I think it is completely deservedly so. No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood and you can see that the covers between the US and the UK are quite similar like so really strangely like a lot of crossover between them and that a rainbow is like going through the cover but there are slight differences and uh, and yeah I'm not sure why that is though I think I do prefer the, the UK cover I'll Although the, the US cover, I, I, I like sort of how that um, exemplifies kind of the feeling of the portal, which is described in this novel, um, which is really Twitter. Um, so this is a story uh, basically about a, an individual who becomes famous on the internet, on Twitter, much like Patricia Lockwood herself has, and, uh, and is traveling uh, over the world um, talking about this and um, making all these very funny and pointed observations about um, the hilarity and the absurdity and the, um, and the depressing aspects of uh, social media portals like Twitter. And, uh, and 
Yeah, and, and I, as I've talked about before, since this is on the, the Women's Prize shortlist, and uh, though I wouldn't personally wouldn't have put this on the Women's Prize shortlist uh, this year, but uh, but I uh, yeah I appreciated and enjoyed the first part of the book, but then the second part I felt sort of fell off because it um, it describes the 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 experiences of this character when confronted by a very real world situation of a niece of hers which is born with very um, serious health problems and uh, and so trying to deal with the the real world reality of that while having this sensibility which has been so informed by the internet and i can see from the outside how pointed and meaningful that is but at the same time i feel like it just didn't entirely work for me the and uh, and yeah and i have been wanting to to reread this but i'm not sure i will because there's so many other things that i want to get to reading but um but yeah so this is a book that is really divided some people like including me and anna in our talks about it but uh, but i think is really interesting next is a novel which hasn't been published yet here in the uk though it sounds really good uh, it's called the fourth child by Jessica Winter and this is a novel about a woman who in like mid to late uh, 20th century America um, is devoutly Catholic and uh, she gets married and she has multiple children with her husband but as her children have got older um, she still feels somewhat like unfulfilled or or, or um, isn't sure what to do with her life and gets involved with the pro-life movement in America and she decides to uh, adopt a ch child um, from another country and um, and raise that child uh, but the child turns out to have a lot of difficulties and it, and it's very um, challenging for her so yeah it's exploring um, the issues to do with religion and, and faith and uh, the, the sort of purity of uh, individual religious practice and then how that works in the reality of the, the wider world. And uh, I like how that the um, the author of this article notes that she doesn't explore this like in a judgmental way, but in um, yeah, li really looking at the uh, individual life of this this character and the, the issues that she's struggling with. And um, yeah, and I think that's so interesting. And, and, and I've been thinking um, recently about the, um, the, the pro life and movement in America because I just recently watched this film from the mid 90s called If These Walls Could Talk um, which has an extraordinary cast um, including Demi Moore and Sissy Spacek and Cher and uh, and I just sort of randomly came across um, this this film which was a TV movie um, and uh, because in my household we've been doing a sort of mini Cher marathon watching um, films of Cher um, just for fun and and, uh, and yeah, and so came across this film, and it's not a, a single story. It's actually three different stories all in one film of different women. There's a siren going by, of different women in different decades who uh, become pregnant and then are faced with the issue about whether to carry through that pregnancy or um, or abort it. And and yeah, and, and covering the the sort of different perspectives of pro-life and pro-choice um, movements in in America. And anyway, that's a, that's a little tangent but uh, but anyway that's to say that I think yeah it's a really interesting difficult issue uh, that America still continues to struggle with and so I think this novel will give an interesting perspective and yeah and I'd really like to read it. Liberty by Caitlin Greenidge and uh, this is a novel that I know a lot of readers in the US have been discussing and debating. Uh, so this is the UK cover and this is the US cover and uh, I have to say I think I prefer the, the UK cover. I just think this is a lot more striking and, and original. Uh, so so this is a novel about a young black woman growing up in Brooklyn uh, in America and uh, and she is born to a doctor mother and uh, who has sort of designs about what she wants her daughter to do with her life um, but she the daughter has different ideas uh, about that and so grows up and tries to become her own person and uh, goes to 
Haiti and uh, and uh, has some experiences there and yeah and and, uh, and is a sort of coming of age a fictional story uh, from that era and I've just heard such great things about this that I'm really looking forward to reading it. Infinite Country by Patricia Engel. This is a novel that I think has been published in the UK though I haven't really seen it around. Um, I think that the UK cover and the US cover are the same but anyway this story is a story about a young Colombian couple uh, who uh, uh, because circumstances are so bad in um, their their native city, and um, they they move to the U.S. and start a life for themselves there, and have multiple children. Uh, but when the father is found to be undocumented, he is sent back to Colombia. Um, so it's about his struggles, and then the the mother's struggles, um, continuing to live in the U.S. with their their children. And yeah, sounds like a really powerful story. Um, so yeah, I'd like to uh, get a copy of this and to read it. Do you Transition Baby by Tori Peters. Uh, so here's the UK cover and the US cover. And again, I think I have to say I prefer the, the UK cover more. Uh, so this is another much talked about novel um, which hasn't made the Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist, though I wish it had. Uh, it was on the long list. And so yeah, I uh, just really wish it was on the, the shortlist because I think it is such an incredible novel and story and so powerful and it's really stuck with me. So it is the, the story of Reese, um, who is a trans woman that is uh, desperate to become a mother, and uh, the story of Ames, uh, who was formerly known as Amy, uh, but detransitioned and is living as a man again. And it is also uh, the story of Katrina, who is Ames's boss, um, who has become pregnant by Ames, and now they are deciding what to do about this pregnancy, um, whether they can form a sort of improvised family with the, the three of them um, to raise this child and all the complications of deciding that and the, the complicated relationships between them and the going into the history of both Ames and Reese and uh, the stories of their lives and it is so beautiful and powerful and funny and uh, just such a lively uh, really exciting novel that yeah I just continue to keep thinking about and uh, I hope it'll get more prize attention. The Book of Difficult Fruit by Kate Lebo and this uh, book is a real curiosity. Um, so this is the UK cover and this is the US cover and I I, I, real, I like them both. Um, they're, they're sort of similar in some ways uh, but if I was forced to choose I think I would have to go with the, the US cover um, in this instance. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, this book is a real curiosity. So the author goes through uh, a series of different unusual fruits um, in alphabetical order and gives sort of the story of them but also some reflections about her life and discussions about the wider culture and history um, but the the author I think is also a poet so um, so the the entries are, are have a sort of poetic quality to them um, so yeah it's quite like difficult to describe this like mashup of a book but uh, but yeah so intriguing um, so I do still want to get to reading this next is the memoir after Aftershocks by Nadia Awusu. Uh, so this is the UK cover and this is the US cover. Um, both really good. Um, they're, they're very different from each other but uh, but yeah I, I really like both of these covers so can't really like choose between them. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you um, have a preference for them. But, uh, but yeah this is a really interesting story, this memoir about the, the author. There is another siren going by. Um, there's obviously lots of activity today. Anyway, um, so this is about the um, memoir about the author's life growing up in a family where her father worked for the United Nations. So she lived in many different countries throughout her life and uh, and so had a very um, jostled sense of home um, because she lived in so many different locations and was seeing perspectives on these different cultures and countries um, through a very privileged position and is was aware of that. Um, but how this is created a sort of fractured sense of identity for her and so she she reflects on all of this and and I've heard such great things uh, about this this memoir and so yeah I'm still really looking forward to, to reading this. Another nonfiction book on the list is Under a White Sky by Elizabeth Colbert and this is a book looking at the environmental crisis and uh, through consulting with a number of different scientists and climatologists um, looking at how we can reverse engineer 
near this environmental mess we've got into and whether that is still possible. And so, yeah, really facing up to uh, this, this crisis that we are all dealing with. It sounds like such a powerful book and I feel like this is an issue that I need to read more about. In the Quick by Kate Hope Day. This is a novel which in the, the article, um, Hilary Kelly describes this as Jane Eyre in space. And that totally sold me um, because I, I love Jane Eyre and I love outer space, things to do with outer space. Um, so this sounds like the perfect novel for me. It hasn't been published in the UK yet, so I need to get a copy of this book. Um, so this is about in, set in the, the near future, I think, and it's about an orphaned girl um, who grows up in the, the space program and, and to become an astronaut and is sent on a mission to try to find out what happened to a, a spaceship that, that goes missing. And so it's about her, her development, um, but also, yeah, this, this issue in the, the space program at the time. And uh, But I've looked at Goodreads about this, and there are very mixed opinions about this book. Um, some people really didn't like it, and other people really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, and, and I, I always, it's always like a, a, a perilous um, thing going on Goodreads. But, uh, but yeah, I tend to believe some of the negative reviews talk about how they loved this author's previous book, but, um, but yeah, just really didn't get along with this one. So I'm slightly trepidatious about it. I'm sort of, uh, yeah, balancing my expectations, but I do still really want to read it. Um, if you've read it, let me know what you think about it below. Hot Stew by Fiona Mosley. I don't have a copy of this, though I don't know why I, I haven't bought it yet, because I love the author's novel Elmet, and uh, so I've been really wanting to read this, and it sounds really good. Um, so, uh, so yeah, here is the US and the UK cover. Um, I do think I slightly prefer the US cover and the sort of design of this like, classical painting, but then I see that the UK cover seems more reflective of the subject matter, because it's a story about a French restaurant in Soho, and how there's a brothel above this restaurant, and it's about the various inhabitants of this building and how they're trying to defend the building from developers that are, are coming um, for to redevelop it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, it sounds like a really good story. I mean, I, I love London set stories since I live here, and um, yeah, I'm very familiar with uh, Soho and the, the area that uh, it, it, I'm sure it describes a lot. And, uh, and yeah, so really looking forward to reading this. A biography on the list is Fierce Poise by Alexander Nemiroff, all about the life of Helen Frankenthaler, uh, who was an artist of the American artist of the mid 20th century, and she created these abstract paintings um, that were very vibrant and colorful and has always been um, or, or frequently been dismissed as uh, painting kind of these pretty abstract uh, pictures. But um, the author re-examines her life and her place in the art world, her contribution to artistic movements and uh, and yeah, re really re-evaluating um, the, the life of this artist. So I have to admit, I've not really heard of before. Um, so yeah, I'd be really interested to explore this. Another nonfiction book that I just talked about in a very recent book haul video is Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keefe. Um, so here's the UK cover and this is the US cover. I, I think they're both good and uh, yeah, I can really pick between them. So this is all about uh, the history of the Sackler family, um, which is one of the wealthiest families uh, in the world, who have been great contributors to different artistic uh, organizations and institutions, and their name is on, like, on a lot of these institutions, but their money mainly came from these pharmaceutical um, companies that they, they own, and um, and how their company developed um, the drug Oxycontin, and how this has become an epidemic in drug abuse. And so he looks at the, the murky history of this this family and, uh, and finds a lot of surprising things about it. So this is quite a lawn book, but one, yeah, I've heard really great things about. A lot of people commented in my uh, book haul video that um, that they who have read this and and think it's a really powerful book. So um, so I'm really looking forward to reading this. Painting Time by Melis 
Mr. Karangal. Uh, this is translated from the French by Jessica Moore. And so this is the UK cover and this is the US cover. I think both of them are good, um, though if yeah, I was forced to choose, I think I'd prefer the, the UK cover. Um, so this is an author, uh, the French author, obviously, um, who has been previously uh, listed for the International Booker Prize. And this is the story of a group of girls that are going to a art college in uh, Paris and about their development there and uh, their study. And so I think it's part coming of age story and part uh, yeah, evaluation of the history of art, including going to look at some cave paintings. Um, so that's why that's on the, the cover of the, the UK edition of this novel. And uh, yeah, it just sounds like a really good story on the, the type of novel that I would really, really enjoy. And so uh, so like sort of looking at the, the history of humanity um, through this personal perspective. So I'm looking forward to, to getting to this. This has just been published in the, the UK. So those are all of the, the books on the list. Um, yeah, let me know in the, whoa, almost dropped all of them, but here they all are. <laughs> and so, um, so yeah, let me know in the comments below uh, if you've read any of these, if you agree with the choices, if you're really intrigued to read any of these now. And also if you prefer the, the US or the UK covers that I showed uh, on camera, um, it'd just be sort of fun to debate about that. But also if you have any other books that um, you think are your like top reads of the year so far, uh, let me know about those in the comments below because I'd like to hear about those. So I uh, hope you're doing well and reading good things. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.